And on September 2nd of 2020, an announcement was made to the effect that the pump price of premium motor spirit has been increased to 151 naira 56 kobo per liter from its previous price of 148 naira and 150 naira. But it has been reported that pump prices in some filling stations were going for as much as 161 naira. This will be second uh, such announcement of pump price increase under the COVID-19 pandemic after it was gleefully announced to all that the petroleum products market was going to be henceforth uh, deregulated. Since the announcement of this increase, as hell has been let loose as we return to familiar territory of agitation, which usually follows such increases. Joining us to make sense of all of this conversation is Yomi Ogunola, who is legal and a legal practitioner and broadcaster, and also we have a legal practitioner in studio and public affairs analyst, Libros Oshoma. Good to have you, Libros Oshoma. And uh, you're me on the other end. Good to have you. Thank you for joining us. All right, before we connect to uh, you're me on the other end, Libros, are you surprised that um, we are back to this conversation again, um, the removal of the subsidy from the government. From the government. Yes, I am. Um, I'm very, very surprised that um, the same government that had told us that they will, um, during campaigns in 2015, that they will ensure that the refineries are working. Mm -hmm. Precisely on the third of uh, Monday, the third of January, 2012. Alaji Lai Mohammed. It's interesting that you have the accurate dates. There. Yes, Alaji Lai Mohammed did say um, when um, the president, then president Gulag Jonathan, greeted Nigerians with a New Year gift of um, increment in uh, pump price from 65 naira to 141 naira per liter, and that um, Alaji Lai Mohammed did say during consultation that they did also told uh, the then president that if at all there is subsidy, according to him, if at all there is subsidy, and that if before government can contemplate removal of subsidy, government must ensure that the refineries are working and then um, also new ones should be built. I am not saying there is no subsidy, but if you go to Ghana as we speak, Ga the Ghanaian government had even, you know, stopped um, um, uh, people from paying taxes mm. for the duration of the pandemic because they know that their people had not worked. The Ghanaian government had even uh, encouraged landlords not to collect rents for this time. If you go to Europe, they are sharing all kinds of, you know, bailouts to citizens, relief uh, money, loans. If you go to Canada, America, the same thing. Mm -hmm. And here, for an oil-producing country, one would have expected that what the government should do first is tighten their own belts. Just the same thing they did to us during the SAP, Structural Adjustment Program mm -hmm. of the IBB administration. Why are you telling the people to adjust? But the government kept feeding fats. As we speak, the government had refused to cut down on its costs. And yet, taxes are increasing because you say there is no funds. Mm. Taxes have increased. Tariffs have increased. The pump price, also, you forget that once pump price increased, Every, because that is the only mono product that runs your economy, since you do not even produce. A, a, a country where government will give forests to people to go on pilgrimage for personal pleasure. Mm. That same country does not have forests to give to you know, exporters or manufacturers. Right. Everything, including some of the things we manufacture here, we, we import. And, and so, it is not a question of, oh, this is the best time to do it. Oh, oh, we need to remove it. I can begin to give you dates. When Obasanjo came, when Obasanjo increased the pump price to, from 22 naira to 40 naira, he said that they had yanked off subsidy mm. and that they were going to allow market forces 
to determine price. If you also remember, when um, in, um, in, in May 2016, in May 2016, when the same government increased the pump price from 97 Naira to 148 Naira, this Ibe Kachuku, while going around the country on stakeholders' um, uh, tour and discussions, he did also say that they have yanked off subsidy and that marketers were now free to import source for forex and import the products. That the PPRA uh, okay. was only going to ensure that they monitor price so that the marketers will not take advantage of the consumers. Mm. Unfortunately, in September, September 1st, 2020, it is the same script that uh, Ibe Kachuku read to us in May 2016 that um, Timi Priya still came and read to, to, to the country. And, and so for me, you now begin to ask yourself, is it that these people think we do not think mm. at all, or we don't remember, or they know that we remember, but they just don't care. We don't follow up. Whether, whether, and then you say, oh, we need to cut costs. Oh, the modular refineries we need, if we, or the money we are going to save here, we invest it in modular refineries. Mm. When you have consistently breached that trust, you say one statement today, tomorrow you say another one. Ibe Kachuku in 2018 did say that if by May 2019 the refineries are not working, that he will resign. Mm -hmm. And because this were some of the things they campaigned with. All right, let, let me ask you to hold your thoughts. We now have uh, Yomi joining us. Thank you for being with us, uh, Mr. Ogunlola. All right, uh, let, let me begin with the same question. Are you surprised with the eventual removal of the subsidy by the federal government? And if you are not, why the hue and cry all over the country, by the way? Okay, um, we will continue with that conversation. There seems to be a bit of challenge uh, with his audio. I mean, even as we talk about this uh, fuel subsidy, some people said that it is not, I mean, experts are saying that it's inevitable, but the problem is the timing. Yeah. You, you see, uh, that's why I keep hammering on the fact that government needs to you know, put the right things in place because the essence of government is the security and welfare of the mm. people. And, and so the people relinquish their rights, their collective rights to you in return for protection mm -hmm. and welfare. And one of such welfare is how to make life bearable for them and not hardship. And so if you look at, oh, yes, it is inevitable we need to yank off for subsidy. Fantastic. So that you don't begin to, you know, uh, subsidize um, a product that um, you, you import. I can also tell you that there is no country in the world where the government does not subsidize at least one thing. Correct. Here, government does not subsidize anything. Rather, it is the people that subsidize the government. And so that said... There are no alternative to petroleum products for now, mm -hmm. as we speak. And you are in a global crisis. You, what you do, you know this is an inevitable decision I must take. But if I take it now, it will first undo hardship on okay. the people that I'm supposed to take care of. And so what do I do? Let me find ways of cutting costs. Let me ensure that this money is used to even you know, fix the refinery so that the ones that we consume internally you know, can be refined locally. Mm. So with that, if you now say, look, I, don't, I no longer want to subsidize anything, what it means is that the cost of production in, internally will not be determined by foreign currencies. Because what is happening here in, in, 2000, in September 2008, and 19, the international price of crude mm. was about $68 per barrel. At that time, we were paying 148 naira per, uh, per liter. But as I speak to you now, the price had further dropped. That's why government is complaining that there is no money. The price this year had further dropped to about $43 per barrel. Even in America, the price of 
a liter of, um, of PMS had come down, you know, all time low. For 10 years, this is the lowest. Correct. And I'm so, but because you are not refining locally, see, if you are importing, the price will be determined by the currency in which you are importing that product. Mm. And so that is why you have to ensure that you refine locally so that, that the price of the commodity in your country is not determined no, by a too. currency that you are not in control of because you do not produce anything. So your, your balance of payment is always negative. Mm. Your trade, there is no uh, equilibrium between your, your, your import and export. So it becomes difficult for you to have forests. And, and so definitely the price will go up. Because if forest, as at last year, was 360 naira to a dollar, mm. and this year it is hovering between 400 and 500, definitely, if you are going to export, it is that currency that will determine the price. But if you are producing it locally, you don't have any business with them. Um, and so, but then these same people will tell you the price had gone up at the international market. But they are quick to go abroad mm. and buy cars. At this same high price, and refuse the one that for is traditional produced. rulers, for themselves, for judges, for commissioners, they are not even thinking. How do we ensure that we domesticate these industries here, so that the money would, you know, Still remain in your we country. remain here, we we'll be domiciled here? How do we ensure that we don't? This is capital flight. Even the the pure water that we make here, we are country of pure water. The, 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 what do you call it? Um, the, the nylon that you use to make the pure water, mm. some of the raw materials are important because Elimit Petrochemical cannot supply the demand for it. And, and so, a government that is thinking, even within the box, not to even, by asking them to think outside the box, you'll be asking for too much. A government that is thinking will say, look, you know what? How do we ensure that you know, when we are campaigning, we sit down, let's look at these our manifestos again. Hmm. We did say that, oh, the private jet we are going to offload. We'll save costs there. We did say that we are going to cut our own allowances to save costs. Because Lamido uh, Sanusi, where a CBN governor, said 25%, 25% of Nigerians consume about 80% of the budgets. And, and so this 25%, how do we ensure that we cut... From the that. cost. If we cut cost here, we, if we make it, let's make it 40% consumption, would have saved about another 40% that we can use to cushion the effect of this hardship, pending where we get out, you know, of this crisis. But no, nobody's thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and the economists that are advising, some of these economists, ask them where is a kakpamre. They do not know. Let, let's get the Ask thought them thought. where is... They do not know right, because, but they know more of the hotels in the big cities. When you go to these communities, you will know the hardship that Nigerians had to face mm. as a result of this increment. All right, because Lebrous, if you hold your thoughts, sorry, uh, let's get. Uh, I'm angry this morning. <laughs> you you have time to calm down. Let's get your miss uh, thoughts on this. Yomi, we understand we're having a bit of challenge. Thank you for still being there. We you, you're here. I'm sure you're listening into the conversation. Uh, removal of subsidy. Now, while the argument of the wrong timing is one hand for the government, its revenue is also shrinking, uh, which is as a result of COVID-19. Now, why subsidize a commodity few persons enjoy with one trillion naira annually is the question. So I, I did not get your question. Okay. So I, I said, while the arguments of wrong timing is on, on the one hand, for the government, its revenue is shrinking, no thanks to COVID-19. Now, why subsidize a commodity few persons enjoy with one trillion naira annually? Oh, okay. Now, you see, the reason why majority of Nigerians are now angry is not because like they are averse to deregulation. Because we have seen that deregulation is a conduit pipe 
especially when you you view the 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 facts that are now emerging that money paid for the subsidy regime does not get into the consolidated revenue fund it is taken directly from nnpc which opens the gateway for corruption it, it is an incubator of corruption now why are nigerians angry mm. nigerians are angry because the APC and its government deceived Nigerians. They rode to power on deception. And why do I say that? In 2012, the government of the Jonathan, good luck Jonathan, came up with the idea of when it saw all that was happening, all the mess that was happening in that, in that sector, that we deregulate, but unfortunately, the APC and the 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 the, 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 the uh, Buari campaign team gobbled the flag and fed Nigerians with falsehood, and it was on that basis that Jonathan lost credibility of the people. You know, of the people. Now, look at what happened. Between 2012 and 2019, 6.012 trillion naira. That's about over $20 billion was lost because of the deception of the APC and Buhari-led government. You cannot put something on nothing, no matter how grandiose and expect it to stand. That is what we are saying. Nigeria would have been saved 6.012 billion uh, 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 trillion naira. You can imagine what that humongous amount of money mm. can do for this country. Over 20 billion dollars can build us six St. Thomas's Hospital in UK. One each in the geopolitical zones. And it will build us two refineries in South South, where the raw material is. Why did they deceive Nigerians? That is the, that's the question we're asking them. What, so, what, was that the only thing they could think of? Now, look at what is happening. So what we're saying is this. Mm -hmm. if, if the subsidy regime had been terminated in 2012, a time Commodity prices were relatively stable. For instance, a bag of rice was selling and uh, the dollar was exchanging for about 165 naira. Now, the, 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 the situation at that time would have been best to cushion the effect of removing subsidy. Now, in 2020, since March, most Nigerians have stayed back at home. They are not doing anything. Some of them have lost their jobs. Incomes have dwindled here and there. You now bring this. So if this is a government who will not forgive. Hmm. All right. Uh, Road to power on the crest of deception. Nobody is against deregulation. It is long overdue. All right. Let me continue the, the this. The same people in government who are benefiting from the subsidy regime. And it has to stop. All right, Yami, hold your thoughts there. Let me continue with uh, Libros, who's here in studio. Uh, Libros, if we step back a bit earlier when, you were, uh, when we were having this conversation, you mentioned that it seemed that every other administration came with the same script and, you know, have read out the same script, so to say, to Nigerians. Now, is the problem the fact that we are not also following up, you know, as a people to be able to say, you know what, you told us this before and we're still saying the same thing. There's no change. It's rather reinventing the wheel. Where, you know, where does the will of the people stand in this to be able to make a change that is positive happen for us? What, what has happened is that, um, like Yomi had said, um, we are easily carried away by deceptive, deceptions and fine lines. And so to that extent, people come... What do you mean by fine lines? Fine lines. fine lines. Um, I, I, I gave you a large line Mohammed statement made in 2012, you know. And if you go online, you can see loads of similar statements made by him. Today is in government. 
all of those beautiful recommendations that he made, one would have expected that four years would have been enough to put some in place, but nothing. At that, also, they had told us that um, if you save, if you, if you clean up the subsidy regime, that what was happening was, you know, Buhari even specifically in, in um, uh, London during an interview in 2014, did say that there was no subsidy, that anybody that tells you that a subsidy is a fraud. Hmm. And, and so, even though at that time it was glaring that this product, the cost of landing was lower than the, what it was being sold in the market, and but that, oh, that the, the better way to do it. And so, when they came on board, where, rather than follow up with all the promises, or even when those promises were made, rather than give timelines, mm -hmm. were simply carried away with the fine lines. None of us was bothered about the, the timelines. And then when they came on board, a lot of us also started making excuses for their inefficiency. Rather than say, oh, look, you've come on board, hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. The first you was... Deliver your promises. Yes, the first was... Oh no, um, the mess of 16 years cannot be cleaned. So you need to give Buhari like two years. The mess of 16 years cannot be cleaned. The mess of 16 years cannot be cleaned. And so for two years, they also started adding mess to the mess. And, and so it became, instead of becoming um, 16 years, it became 18 years mess. Hmm. By the third year, it was, oh look, you need to give him an extension so that he can address all of the problems. So those were the excuses we were making for them instead of holding them accountable. And now that we have given them another four years, we suddenly realize that these people do not have any solution to the problems. So all the recommendations that they made, they did not even you know, study them or they didn't have a team to look at them. Even the six point something trillion that my, my colleague yeah. Yomi is talking about, even if you had saved that money and give it to this same government, they will filter it away. They were either using it to buy cars or share it to governors who can pay salaries, who can think outside the box. So what's the and then go role? to China to borrow that same money for, for railway construction. I mean, liberals, let's move away and from so that. so that's why people mm -hmm. are angry. Even though the people themselves had, you know, be quiet for too long. We do, as we speak now, I, I have told people consistently, if you are waiting for opposition party to do anything for you, you wait for eternity. We do not have opposition party. PDP is still learning how to be opposition. I pray it doesn't take them 60 years mm -hmm. to learn because they do not even know what it is to play opposition. All right, Yomi, all right, uh, uh, Libras, let's connect to Yomina. I'm sure you hear all that um, Libras is saying. My question again to you, same as Libras, is... What's the people's role in all of this? Because it's all what the government has done, what this administration has failed to do. What are we supposed to do? Where do we come in as a people to seek for the change that works you know, uh, for the people as well? Yes, you see, the constitution is very clear. The role of the people in their governance. By virtue of section 2B, of the 1999 Constitution, their participation is gone. Mm. Is to come out and express their grievances to government. Situation where they save money and a few vagabonds in power take all the money and then you come back to square one. Can you imagine? Why is it that every time we are thinking of saving for this country, we are looking at the common men who can barely feed, who cannot send their children to school, who don't have roads to ply, good roads to ply. In Nigeria, people are having to generate their own electricity. They are having to generate their own water supply. Government appears to be on holiday in Nigeria. The only thing we know is when they start sharing their money. That's a strong Why statement should the people to sit down at home and be what? 
Kine moved. I was here in Ibadan. I led a couple of boys on the street to protest, to register our grievance to government. Nigerians should be able to do that. Should IMF be dictating the conditionalities they are giving to us now? And they are not fullness of government. Government spending must reduce the expenditure the kind of national assembly that these people have, 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 have forced upon us. Why should a single senator be earning over 30 million naira a month? That is what is circulating in the news. Where are they working? In the moon? Are they not the same Nigerians? Now, I heard the government say something. They said it is time Nigerians start paying what is due for, you know, the, the, the products they are getting. But the same government is not thinking of what is due to the workers in terms of payment. I did a program a couple of years ago, that's about on, 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 on GoTel TV, before it became TVC, where I did the analysis. And I said the minimum wage of Nigeria, as at that time, I think it must be over 10 years now, was 56,000 naira as minimum wage. That is the due pay, the legitimate pay of an average Nigerian worker. Now, if you look at 10 years after, it should be around 65, 70,000. That should be the minimum wage in Nigeria. They have talked to 18,000 naira, but they are expecting Nigerians to pay the right things for, 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 for electricity, pay what is right for, 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 for fuel, pay what is right for VAT, Pay what is right for all kinds of things that they are bringing up there. But when you save your money, they say, no, we will reduce that one. It will reduce to one point something percent, save, you know, interest on savings. Why are they cheating Nigerians? So what Nigerians are supposed to do, they should, this is democracy. The right to protest is guaranteed by the Constitution. They should be on the streets. So let them know. After Rob Wari who went on the street before he became president, so why should they deny us the right to be on the street to express our differences? Nigerians, you occupy. All right, let's move away from that a bit. Hopefully, you can. They should be me. on every street in Nigeria. Your your freedom, your freedom, your freedom square in Lagos. By now, all who have been occupied. Otherwise, these people will kill everybody. All right, they don't Siyomi, appear to we understand move, what is happening. They don't forward. appear to have it. We will move forward with this conversation. And let's also look at the idea of zero budgeting of subsidy by the current administration. How come we are now talking about removal of subsidy? Is this, is this a case of misappropriation or what is the explanation? Can, can you give me the question again? Okay. I'm saying um, that... Let's look, take a look at the idea of zero budgeting of subsidy by the current administration. Uh, how come we are now talking about the removal of subsidy? What's the explanation? Is it a misappropriation? Or what, how do we explain this altogether? Well, you see, right now, that's what they, they, there's something. How that these guys are engaged in another deception. Why do I say that? You say you have deregulated the sector, but PPPRE will still be determining price. What kind of deregulation is that? So it appears the only reason why they have come out now with this deregulation is because of the dwindling prices of crude oil in the international market. Mm -hmm. There's no money for them to steal. I'm sure that if the situation improves, they will still come back and introduce that, uh, that subsidy, subsidy regime. The only reason why they are doing it now is because there is just no way to escape. Their rat has been trapped. That is the only, that's the only thing I see. Otherwise, if you say you have deregulated, why are you the let market forces determine price now? Why are you not allowing market forces to determine price? Why should it be you to be fixing the price? So you, is that deregulated? Is that a deregulated industry where the government still determines price? These people are not serious. <laughs> I'm telling you, my sister, they are not serious. Uh, all right, Let Th the thank market you for like it said, determine prices because the way they are going is just because there's no money to steal in that sector again. That they are, they are coming up with this deregulation. Let this me give Libras time to stuff. respond to that. I am afraid Libras, if the situation improves, 
they may come back again with their something new again. All right, Yami, let's give Libras time now to talk. Thank you. Uh, Libras. Yeah, uh, uh, zero budgeting is a method uh, uh, of budgeting in which expenses must um, be justified for each you know, new period. And so, um, irrespective of what you have um, in the budget, at every turn, once you justify the expenses, money will be allocated. Mm -hmm. Once you justify expenses, money will be allocated. You know, that's um, what they call zero budget. And so, if you say you have deregulated, mm -hmm. and so, but you are now, you know, introducing a method of zero budgeting in. So that means if tomorrow your expenses in that area is justified, you allocate money, more money, spent. more money to it. You can, it can be more than what you spent last year. And, and so, you have deregulated, but you are paying bridging costs. Mm -hmm. And so if that bridging cost is justified tomorrow, you will allocate money to it. Bridging cost is the cost of, you know, bridging the product from where it is um, offloaded to where the consumer is. And so that's why the price is still uniform. Mm. That's why you have it at, it's still hovering around one, uh, 155 and 165 you know, between Lagos and Sokoto and, you know, everywhere. And so the bridging cost is borne by this government that had deregulated. And that's why you still have, um, you know, a, a petroleum equalization funds. Mm. You know, so for me, and like my colleague had said, this is the only time also that every, at every point when they say we have deregulated and this is the price, they give you a template. Mm -hmm. to say this is how we arrive at the price. But this is the first time government had refused to give a template on how they arrive at this, at price. this price. Because also the government hands are not clean. And like we say, he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Mm -hmm. And that's why people are raising, you know, and then government is hurriedly, you know, looking for economists to try and convince people that, yes, this is the best thing to do. And give but it's shameful. explanation. All right.